you. No problem. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, if Huitsu joins, I can catch her up. No problem. So thank you all so much for coming. Um, uh, my name is Monica. For those of you who don't know me, I work for the online campus. And this is Manpreet. He's our system administrator. <laughs> and we are going to go over Blackboard Ultra today. So we're going to just talk about um, what Blackboard Ultra is, why we call it Ultra, the differences that you'll notice when logging in, right, that are screen kind of changed a few a uh, few months ago. So mm -hmm. we're going to walk you through a few of those things. And then Manpreet's going to go into the actual ultra courses and he's going to show you the look and feel and what's different between what we call classic courses, which is what you're all used to seeing. And then the ultra course, which is kind of the new and improved purple and black version, which um, again, Manpreet's going to go into and, and kind of share in more detail. And if you have questions throughout, please feel free to interrupt either one of us and um, we can answer your question or you can wait till the end because we'll also do a Q&A at the end. <clears throat> I'm going to skip that. Is it okay? Okay. So if you noticed, our login page did update a few months ago. I think it's been like six months now. <laughs> um, so now you can have our logo. And the newest addition is there will be announcements at the bottom. And so we, we try to keep that to things that are, you know, very important for you to know. So you'll see that there will be announcements listed right underneath um, the login page as well. Okay. So we say ultra, but what exactly does that mean, right? There's a lot of different um, ultras when it comes to Blackboard. So we kind of want to break this down for you just so that you're familiar with the terminology that we use, right? So ultra base navigation, that just means that is just this page, right? This page. And once you log in, the little tabs on the side. So that is just the way that Blackboard has set up the navigation of our courses, our organizations, all the tools, which I will show you as well. And then what we call um, classic courses, those are the ones that you're familiar with. That is currently what all of the classes are default set to is the classic view. So that's that view of you log in, it's like gray and black. You've got your menu on the left hand side. That's what we call our classic course. And then the newer version is what we're calling ultra courses, right? And that's something that Manpreet is going to show you. Um, it's definitely a different look and feel, but it's a lot more mobile friendly. The students are receiving um, their the way that they navigate it is a lot easier for them. And so it kind of mimics um, some different LMSs that are out there. And so we'll go ahead and show you if you are interested how to convert your class to an ultra course. And then there's ultra BB collaborate. And so what that is, is we're using Zoom right now. This is one of our chosen solutions for um, web conferencing, but Blackboard actually has their own integrated into every course. So we, will, we can go over that and show you that um, the Blackboard Collaborate is just another way to have students web conference. You can also do that with your students. And what's nice is if you record anything in Blackboard Ultra, those recordings go directly into your Blackboard class. Um, and then BB Student has an Ultra format as well. And so again, we're gonna go over all of these, but that's just kind of the way we use our terminology when it comes to saying Blackboard Ultra. Any questions around that? Oh, pretty straightforward. Okay. So the landing page, once you actually click log in, you are automatically taken to the courses tab, right? And so this is kind of the default that everyone has seen. This is the new and improved version, right? This is our ultra um, navigation screen. So you're automatically taken to courses where your courses will be listed for you. Most of you will have those training courses at the top, um, which you can also filter out, which I, I can show you how to do that. And then um, this is also going to be where you can click around on the, the tabs, right? So our institution page is going to have all of our updates, announcements, anything that's, you know, campus and student, faculty, everything is in institution pages, but it's broken down by student and faculty. Um, your profile, so if you click on that second link, that's going to be your profile information. That's where you can add a picture of yourself. You can update your email address, things like that. The activity stream, that is really important for students. So that is the one that gets updated automatically when you, um, you know, maybe you change a due date, you update something, you edit the points of an assignment. Students will be notified when you do that in the activity stream. So that's something where the notifications can be changed, but that is on a per student or per faculty basis. So if you're interested in changing the notifications you receive, um, that's also going to affect, that's where you go in the in activity stream. To change the notifications, you have to actually do that in your profile. So if I clicked on Manpreet's name, I could go in there and I could actually edit the notifications um, 
so then that way I'm not being, you know, emailed every time something is changed. Um, um, again, your courses tab, that's going to be where you can see all of your courses. Your current semester is going to be loaded first right here in the, in the center, but you can look at upcoming or previous terms by clicking on those arrows that are pointing to the left and the right. So the right is going to go to your upcoming courses. So um, back in December, that's where your spring courses were, right? They were in upcoming. Now when you log in, you should see your spring courses listed here under current. Mm -hmm. So these, these arrows do let you scroll between semesters. So you can go back into previous semesters or again forward. For those of you that have master courses, that's really important to be able to click back because your master term is always um, in a previous term. Also, these little stars next to each course that is listed, that's a way to actually favorite that class. And if you favorite that class, it'll actually put it towards the top and you'll be able to, it's almost like a hot link, right? It, it puts that at the very top and it favorites it so that your courses that you, maybe you're utilizing the most, those can kind of float to the top. You can also search for a course. So you can type in that search bar and it will filter out courses based on the name or you can click the drop down where it says filter and you can click, um, I, this is not clickable, sorry, it's a screenshot, <laughs> but you could choose um, to filter courses that way as well. You can choose by closed courses, um, open courses, um, available to students, those kind of things. Um, another really important tab is right under the courses tab, that's the organization tab. So a lot of you may not have clicked on that yet, but if you do, there's a really important resource in there called rubrics library. And it's something where you can go and look at um, a bunch of different rubrics that we have aggregated. There's some notes in there about the um, categories in which they use. And you can actually download anything from the rubrics organization and upload it to your course and use it as a rubric in your course. Um, the calendar tab, again, that's gonna be, if that's more for students. Um, if you use the due date function in Blackboard, the due dates will automatically be added to the student's calendar. So when they click on that, they can see the due dates for all of their upcoming courses. Um, messages, that is a tab right here. These are your messages that will stay within Blackboard. So if you choose course messages instead of email when you're in your Blackboard course, and again, I can show you this, um, that's where it's going to go. It's gonna to go to an inbox that is specifically just for Blackboard. If you email your students, that goes to their Horizon account. So that's important to know the difference just between course messages and emailing your students, right? Email goes to their horizon, course messages will actually just give them a message right in here in Blackboard when they log in. Um, grades, again, that's more for students. It's just, um, they can click on that and see their grade center for each of their courses. Tools is really important. If you click on that, you'll be able to see there's some new features in there. Um, we've added a quick link for you where you can get to your email, you can get to um, your faculty center. So there's some really cool, important quick links in the tools. Um, and then you will not have admin and then sign out, right? So that's kind of our, what we call ultra navigation. So on the left-hand side, we have our, our new tabs. Does anyone have any questions about this or how to change semesters or any, anything about Navigation? Well, I have one question about course messages and the difference between email. Should I save that to the end? No, go ahead, please, please ask. Okay, so um, if I uh, send to all of my students by going in, but this is, this is in the classic, um, this isn't in ultra. So, so I'm a little, I'm not sure if I should be asking you this about ultra because it, what I'm actually using is classic. Thank you so much. Um, okay, so you're talking about when you're in a, uh, so in a in, classic course. Yeah, if I'm in my Blackboard shell for a, for a particular class okay. and I decide I want to send everybody a message, I can go into my grade book and I can, collect, I can click a, a email all users and then I can send um, an email um, to them um, and then, so that goes to their Horizon accounts. Right. Am I correct about that? Okay, so, so right in here on the course tools, right? That's where, that's where it's really important that on the right-hand side, if you click the send email button, the email is gonna go to the Horizon account. But if you choose course messages, where is that? Where is that? Where's it? You're probably, it should be. I know, I can't find it though. 
Oh, it's probably hidden in that one. Okay. Um, there is another option. Sorry, I'm in a class that doesn't have it. There's another option on the left hand side that says course message. So as long as you're using send email, this email is going to go to their Horizon account. Okay. But if you choose the course messages, that's going to go to the message within Blackboard itself. So okay. that's, that's really the only difference is you want to think about email is going to go to their actual email account. Messages are going to stay within Blackboard. Now, is there a way that I can make sure students don't send me anything that ends up in a um, course, uh, course messages um, box? That's because a very good, that's a very good point. And so that's probably why you can actually, when you're in this course tool page, courses tools, you can hide any of these links. And so what you could do is you could just hide the link that says course message and okay. only allow them to use the email. And okay. then that's actually a really good point. You might want to put that in your syllabus and okay. let them know in order to contact me, I only check my email account. So you okay. must send an email. Please do not use the course message tool in Blackboard. But if I hide the course message, it's not an option for them to use. Exactly. But then if they want to message each other, they don't have that option either. Is that right? Right, but they can send email still. So they, instead of using a course message to message each other, they would just use the same button, send email. Oh, and, and, and they then have access to every student that they want to send a mess each email to? Well, yes, yes. Great, thank you very much. No problem. Yeah. And another w great way to do that in a classic course is that you could also put as a, and under the uh, course content where you have like voice thread and calendars. So we have an option there to actually um, link just the email tool to that. And you could hide it from the course tools. So it kind of forces the students to just send out emails versus a course message. But then again, um, they could also send out the course message outside the course. So um, Mike, if you close this course up real quick. So as you can see under calendars, there's a section for messages. Um, so if the students click on messages there, um, let's say you clicked on, just click on any of the courses there for me. Does, do you need a message in it? Or does it matter? Yeah. 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 So as you can see here, um, the students are able to still send out messages even though they're not enabling the course. Um, what's uh, nice about that is um, when you do get a email, um, you, so every day you'll get an email from Blackboard letting you know there's something coming. Um, on the email, there is a little section and you'll be able to see if there is a course message out there for you. Thank you. Yeah. And then just in case you missed that, it's all, what I recommend is um, also under your courses, you see how OTL orientation has zero messages. And then if you look at OTL um, OT1, it has 45 messages. So that's also showing that the students are using course messages in the course. So you could easily go so you have multiple ways to um, determine uh, if you got course messages coming in. Thank you. Yep. Any other questions? No? Okay. Okay. And then I talked about um, the way that you can sort search within your tab. So let me go back to courses. So you can go past previous terms by clicking that way. You can go forward and there also is a new drop down where you can click on current courses and you can just jump to a specific semester quickly. So um, here's where you can favorite. Like I said, you can also, if you click on these three dots, this is where you can make the course private or hide it from your students, right? So right now, in case you're all wondering, your courses are open and available to students. So if you're still working on them or maybe you want to open them next week, you can go ahead and do that here. And it's a, it's a quick one. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay, so now I'm actually going to hand it over to um, Manpreet, and he's going to show you an ultra course. All right, perfect. Do you want to switch me? Yeah, give me a quick second. I'm just going to update something real quick. Oh, thank you. Is it changing to a screen? I do a little demo. Oh, nice. Do you, do you need to log in here? Actually, yeah, let me switch. You want to switch? Okay. Do, do, do. Let me switch you back. Uh-oh. Yep. 
sorry, I'm just updating the Alter course so I could have it on Monica's core, uh, Monica's computer. There you go. <laughs> So um, can, can everybody can see the screen here, all right, for the Ultra Demo course? I'm going to go ahead and click on that real quick to show you a preview of the Ultra course. Okay. There we go. So now when you land in the Ultra course for the first time, um, normally you would see folders in here that would say syllabus. You'll see a folder uh, about the university policies and whatnot in here already pre-made for you. So let's say you want to set up a folder now. So actually, let's, let's start with from top to bottom. So on the very top, as you can see um, up here, we on the top right, we have the content. So when I click on the content, it will land where the course content is. And then we also have the calendar. Uh, this is the course calendar, so you could change it to day view or month view. So let's say you have uh, a quiz set up, uh, which is due on the 19th. Uh, that quiz will actually show up inside your course calendar. So if the students want to look at any upcoming events or any upcoming assignments, they have a capability now of looking at um, due dates by going in the calendar. And the next thing we have is the, this is the discussion board now. So now here's a uh, couple of things changed with the discussion board. Uh, so the way it works now is the students could create their own discussion as well. Um, and you could also create a discussion yourself also. Um, if you need help with that, we could go into more detail on that. So for now, um, I'm just going to uh, move forward and just kind of show you what, what the hat changed. So the next thing we have is going to be the gradebook. So the gradebook is where you would um, see you're able to go directly into to grade assignments. Um, if you want to create a new, uh, so basically, instead of calling it uh, grade columns, now they're called items. So let's say, for example, I wanted to add a new column. Uh, where I'm going to be collecting the paper physically. So I would just do add item. And now, as you can see, it's called new item, and I could just call this one test. And here, um, by default, anything you create in Ultra, it's going to be hidden from student view. The reason being is if, the, if it's visible to students, as soon as it gets posted, uh, students will get alert because um, now we have the capability of students opting in via text message. Uh, they could opt in. Um, they actually, they could also use the email feature. Uh, and the email feature, or depending on how they have it set up, will send out an email right away or a text message right away. Or it could take, uh, or it'll send it end of the day. So, you know, depending on how they have it set up. Um, so for now, we'll just do visible to students. And we're just going to make this worth 10 points. And we're going to call this, we'll just call this a test. So right here, this is where we have the grade categories. So this is where you could actually assign a category to the, um, to the new item you created, right? So I'll just call this test and I'm just gonna hit save. And now we have a grade column called test, right? And then here's the next thing up. So it's the course messages. So if a student does send you a message in a uh, Ultra course, yeah, you'll, uh, you'll be able to look, uh, you'll be able to get to it here very quickly. Um, and the next thing is, um, actually, we could skip that. Uh, we're not going to be using analytics yet, right? <laughs> and let me go back to the Ultra course here. And then what you'll notice is on the left-hand side where it says detail actions, uh, this is where you have your roster. Uh, you'll be able to see um, your TAs in here. Um, you can see all your students that are enrolled um, very quickly. So let's go back to the Ultra course. And then you could also have groups created very quickly. So you know how previously you would have to go to um, course management, and then you would have to go to users and groups, click on groups, create the groups. Uh, now you're able to do it without going, you're, it's all in one place, so it's a lot easier, straightforward. You could say create a group. Um, now you could create your custom group here, add the students, or you could have it set up to where it automatically enrolls the students. So you have that option available now. I'm going to go ahead and cancel that because I don't have any students to add. <laughs> Oops. Close. So the next thing we have is course privacy. So um, you know how before um, you could, so the course privacy, what that allow you to do is it prevents the students from accessing the course. 
So there are two ways to do the course privacy. You could do it inside the course, or you could also do it outside the course. So let me show you that two of the different ways. So if you click on the three dotted uh, three dots here, you actually have a few options. You could open the course, you could hide the course. When you hide the course, it's not hiding it from the students. It just hides it from your current courses or your spring 2019 courses. So if you do accidentally hide something, um, only once you'll get this notification that there's a hidden course. So now if I click on here and go to hidden for me, I could go back to my ultra demo course and I could make this um, show course again, which is gonna put it back under current courses. So let's go back to here. So any questions on that about making the course private and hiding the course? Okay, perfect. And the other great feature that's recently added to uh, Blackboard is attendance. Um, so right now we don't have any students, so I can't really um, show the demo fully. But basically what, you, what happens is as soon as you set up attendance, what it does is it creates a grade column. And you could pretty much, um, so you have the options of the student being absent or late. Um, and they'll, if you do have a weighted, uh, uh, weighted total column, you could have the option to add attendance to it being 10%. And if the students are missing a lot of courses, of course, they're going to start losing out on that. So let's go back. So would that be for an online course or is that meant to it's, satisfy? It's more likely, it's mostly for um, on ground courses. But um, if you, another, another thing you do is if you do have a situation where the students are required to join you on a, um, let's see, join you on a Zoom meeting or a Blackboard collaboration meeting, and you could take um, an attendance there. Um, so that is an option, but I think for, it's more attentive for on ground versus online. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah. And then the next thing that uh, was added recently, it's announcements. So the announcements are on the left-hand side. Uh, so when you send out an announcement, you actually, um, what it does is it's gonna send out an announcement within the course. And what happens is when the students log into the course for the first time, they get a pop-up uh, letting them know that they have an announcement. So um, let me see if I could demo that real quick. And then here we could actually schedule it and we'll just make it available right away and hit save. And what I'm gonna do is, um, if you can please, yeah. So if you go to um, the admin account and our actually that course and, and make yourself a student. Switch my role? Yep. Okay. And what I'm gonna do is just hit refresh and then show you that demo real quick. Just a second. So right now we're uh, updating the settings for the course to change Monica into the student. So we could show you the, how that pop-up works. Okay, and there you go. Oh, didn't work. Um, I think I might have to log out. Actually, let's do this. Open new. Actually, let me do something off screen just to show that demo. Oh, go to the right. Sorry. Oh. Sorry, go to the bottom right, bottom right corner, bottom right corner. Oh, bottom right. Bottom right, bottom right. There you go. Okay. Give me a quick Hot corner, second. sorry. Man, Preet, while you're doing that, just to ask a question. Um, with announcements in Classic, you can send a copy as an email. Can you do that in an ultra class, or is it just going to be within the class itself? Uh, right now, uh, it, it took out the option to send out an email, but what it does is when you have the announcement set up now, it will actually uh, pop up inside the course <coughs> versus sending it out. Perfect. So Let's each see. new student that logs in will get that pop up instead Correct. of an email. Okay. Thank you. So let's see if it works now. Here we are again um, in incognito mode and let's find that demo course. Oh, do you have pop-ups turned on? No. Let's see. Okay, so I'll, I'll look into this some more. So normally what would happen is if the students do uh, click on the course for the first time, the announcement will pop up um, on the course. So actually I'll look into it some more uh, after this. So I can't really 
for the proper demo. Sorry about that. Um, let's let's keep on going. So if you could switch your role back to Perfect. instructor. Instructor. Thank you. All right. So let's go back to our course here. So now the next thing we have is our books and tools. So if you have any kind of third party integration uh, that you would like to do, it's going to be now located under books and tools. So if I click on that, you see that there's a um, menu that pops up on the right hand side. So if I go to browse all course tools, I'm able to view all the um, third party tools that are available to us. And then also if you have any partner cloud um, availability, um, it's all here. So the new thing we just recently added was LinkedIn Learning, uh, which is um, a platform to allow videos to be imported. In. So it's like a learning mo uh, modules and instructor, instructional videos for uh, learning a new skill or something that's related to your course. So you could add that directly into your course now. So if you need um, help with that, we could definitely uh, walk you through that as well. And let me go ahead and any questions on the tools on how they work? Uh, just as an example, what I'm going to do is um, set up one of the most used tool, which is turn it in. So let's say I've gone through the whole process of clicking on books and tools. And the next thing I'm going to do browse all course tools and I'm going to add turn it in. So I'm going to go ahead and click this little plus down here um, and it's going to add this to our course. So as you can see by default, it is hidden from the student. So if I hover over this little icon here, I can do visible to student. And here's a very important thing uh, when you're working with third party tools is that you have to set it up to have a grade column. So if I go to the right hand side here, I'm going to do edit and I'm going to do allow create a grade column for this item. And I'm just going to give it 10, <coughs> 10 and hit save. And so now what it did is it triggered the grade column point and now we have the turn it in assignment 50% set up. Uh, the next step would be to go into settings here, and this is where we could update the points, make it 10 points, um, update the start date, uh, due date, and then the feedback release date, and we just hit submit, and now turn it in the setup. So the other type of assignment we have set up uh, available now, in which we could do it very easily now. So if I hover over this content um, area, um, I could click on this little add button here. So now I have the option to do create, I could do copy content, upload, and content market, which is the same thing as um, books and tools or third-party tools. You have the option to use your cloud storage to upload a content into Blackboard now. So if you have um, Drive, if you're using Google um, Drive, you're able to integrate that directly in there now. Can I ask and then content question? collection is all the content you have on Blackboard. So it's just the same thing as, what was it, what was it called before? Was it my... I think it's just called contact collection now, right? Online storage. Oh, oh it's online storage is now contact collection. Yeah. So any questions on that? Um, how can I add a safe assign? Oh yeah, I'm gonna show you that next. Okay. So um, let's say we are ready to add a safe assign assignment. So if I go to create here, I now have options to do a learning module, folder, document, links, uh, LTI connection. We could do SCORM packages. And what we're gonna do is set up the assignment. So I'm gonna go under assessments and click on assignments. So you notice how under assessments, just like classic, under assessment, we have tests and assignments. So it's a, it's, you know, once you start playing around with it, you'll see that it's kind of similar, but it's not really similar. It's just less steps, less clicks to complete a task, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and do assignment. And you see the assignment is already ready to go. I'm gonna call this uh, safe assign, we'll just call it SA, and I'm going to go to the option here, enable or original reality report for safe assign on the right hand side. And let's see, I'm going to do enable originality report, and now I could do what options I want to do on here. So I'm going to just for uh, for the demo, I'm going to select everything. So now uh, safe assign is active for this particular assignment, and now I could click on done. And now if I need to, I could add additional information. Say, I could do an essay, let's do an essay question here. Actually wait, let's just do text because it's gonna be a submission. So add text. So we'll call this uh, submit. 
items. Sorry, my keyboard is different. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so we'll just call it submit your paper here and I click on save. Um, before I do that, um, you could actually do a few more things on here too. So let's, let's go ahead and save it. And let's go to back to the course. You, as you can see, like, like I mentioned before, anytime you create any assignment, by default, it's going to be hidden from students. So that way it doesn't trigger that message going out to students letting them know that there's a new uh, assignment being created or a new um, test being created. Um, so you, that's the reason it's by default does that. So you could always go back here and say make it visible to students. Um, okay. um, the next thing I could show you is the, let's see. So no, actually the other thing you may be using a lot is going to be the course copy. Um, so let me show you that first and then I'll show you how batch edit works. So to do the course copy now, um, by batch edit on the right hand side, you'll see these three little options. So if I click on here, I can now import content, I could copy content, and I could export course package. So once you go to Ultra, you could only copy to an Ultra course. It won't let you go to Classic. If you do need to go to Classic, you would have to work with um, myself or with the instructor designer like Monica to get that done. But if you're going to Ultra to Ultra, what you would do is you would click on um, copy content. So unlike before where you had to go to the previous course to make the copy, um, in the new ultra courses, you go to your main course and you do copy content and any courses that are already uh, switched to ultra will appear on your menu. And now if I click on the ultra course, I could start selecting what I want to copy over to that course. Uh, for the demo, I won't do it, but uh, what it'll do is it's going to copy all the content over from one ultra course uh, from your previous ultra course to your new ultra course. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel that out because it's going to take some time. <laughs> and again, if any of you are interested in moving your classic course to an ultra course, yeah. please contact us and we can definitely support you through that process because it will involve a little bit of rebuilding. But again, we can definitely do that so that you then have an ultra course that's ready. And then moving forward, you just copy from ultra into ultra. Yep. Can and you, can, uh, excuse me, in ultra, can you still go to the old course and copy it into the new course? Does that make sense? Um, you can, but it's not going to copy. So basically what happens is, um, let me show you what I mean. So if I go to a classic course, I'll just go to the demo course here. You see how on the left hand side we have the course menu items So we like you have announcements, syllabus, and yeah. course material. So yeah. within a syllabus, we have this content here, right? So mm -hmm. what happens is when you copy this over to Ultra, mm -hmm. it's going to create a folder called syllabus. Um, so under that syllabus folder is where you would have your syllabus, uh, syllabus content now. So the only thing you can do with Ultra courses is, uh, for example, let's say you have a situation where you have course materials and within that course material, you have a folder called week one. And then in week one, you have more subfolders. When you copy that over, it's not going to carry everything over because uh, in Ultra courses, they only let you create two folders. Um, it doesn't, so anything beyond that, it kind of gets discarded, right? So this is where um, Monica um, or I could step in and we could um, start rebuilding the course. So when we do copy it over, it's going to carry all the content over. Well, I, I'm actually, I, I had Ultra last semester, uh, um, but the new courses that have been populated in my Blackboard are classic. Correct. So, so by default, all courses that are generated uh, currently are set to classic with the option to convert to ultra. So, um, if you uh, so every for now until ultra is actually ultra is ready, but right now not all the professors are ready to switch to ultra. Oh, so now okay. we have the options currently to allow both classic and ultra, and then the, let the professor choose which one they want to uh, use. Okay. So okay. Minpri and Monica, so if I'm teaching, um, let's say the same uh, scenario, uh, mm -hmm. a faculty member teaching uh, last semester using the ultra course, and then uh, this semester by default is classic, mm -hmm. and I want to maintain and copy my content from last semester to this semester, do you suggest that the faculty member 
for the current semester, spring 2019. Go ahead and convert it first, then copy it content from the last semester or uh, just contact you to do the copying. What do you suggest? Uh, for now, what we recommend is contact us to do the copy. So that way we can make sure that uh, the steps are, all the steps go through properly. Because let's say, for example, if you accidentally um, have, let's say you have a master course, which is a classic, and you want to try to, let's say, hmm, what would be a good way to do it? Let's say, so in your situation, you already have a ultra course and you want to go to ultra. Uh, you can actually do it, but what I recommend is come directly to us. So that way we can make sure that we uh, switch your classic course to ultra, and then we copy all the content over for you. So. Um, order of operations, yeah, right? Order of operations. <laughs> you yeah. can do it yourself as long as you feel confident Correct. that you will for sure creep, take your classic course, uh, switch it to ultra first, mm -hmm. and then make the course copy. If you try to do it beforehand, that's where it's going to Copies cause some problems. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. And let's go. Uh, the, hello. Hi, Robert. Hi. Uh, my question is, uh, uh, I actually can see my classes from last uh, semester is already in ultra version. So mm -hmm. when I, if I do the copy, will all my uh, the partner like the YD plus uh, assignment will uh, also automatically transfer? Uh, so any kind of third party tool will not carry over. So this is where we would have to work with um, the instructor designer to reset that up again. So if something, let's say uh, anything that's directly from Blackboard, like safe assign, it will carry that information over. But unfortunately for Turnitin, um, you would still have to work with the designer to reset up that assignment again. Because what happens is um, Blackboard is able to carry over the gray columns successfully with uh, the correct um, information. However, like Turnitin and other third party tools, they have a specific code that they are get tied to in a grade column. So if that grade column isn't, um, let's say it's in a different course now, it won't sync the grades. Uh, so this is where I would recommend coming to, to the designers and working on that. Yeah, because your you. classes right now are in classic and, and I know you use Wiley a lot. So if you're interested in, in moving to Ultra, definitely come and we can definitely talk about that and I can start building it for you, absolutely. Sounds good. I'm going to email you now. Great. Thanks, Robert. Okay. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Yeah, so when you do, of course, copy, um, you everything does move over. It's just that all of the assignments, tests, things like that, those have to get set up again. Right, so if you if you do a course copy right now from classic to classic, you have to submit, you have to reset up all of your Turnitin links, right? And, and so tests. in all your tests, right? And so the same thing goes for Ultra. You'll have to go in, and the course copy will come over, and the link will be there, but it won't work unless you go in and set it up again. And especially what Manpreet said, you have to make sure you're going to check that create a grade center column, and so that check mark is what actually sends the grade center. The, the column and it creates it for you. And so that's that's the importance. And if you're using any third party tools, then you do have to go back and set them up, set them up, do the due date again, things like that. Yep. But for Turnitin, we actually are working with Turnitin Blackboard. Um, so technology does change um, day to day. So what, the, what we're working on right now is something called deep integration with Turnitin, where a lot of the steps we have to currently do to make the great columns sync are going to go away. So we are still in that process of doing that. So hopefully we could get that done this semester, but um, I'm always pushing back on the vendors to get these technologies available to as fast as possible. Does anyone have any specific questions that or anything you want Manpreet to, to show you while we're in the class before we move on to the badging? <laughs> um, I, I would love help figuring out how to transform a class from original to to uh, ultra. I think I, I came a little bit late, so I'm, I'm sorry if I missed that earlier. Oh, we, we haven't covered that yet, but we could uh, definitely demo that for you. Okay, um, so the, so oh, I'll, I'll save that for the last. Mm -hmm. And the next thing that I wanted to cover was the batch edit. So basically what the batch edit, so um, in classic courses, 
if you wanted to update the due dates for all the assignments. Um, so perfect scenario, you just did a course copy from fall 2018 to your spring uh, 2019 course. And now you have issue where you have due dates are still saying 2018 and you need to update that right away. So now you could click on batch edit and I have two assignments that have due dates already set up here, right? So now I could start selecting the ones I wanna do and I could start um, updating, let's see. So, so as you can see, I have selected uh, these two items. Now under on the right hand side where it says edit selection options, I could do edit dates. So really quickly, if I wanted to, I could make the safe assign and the turn it in since they're both selected, um, it will update the dates right away. So if I wanted to change the date to the 24th, um, it's gonna change that for change it for both of them right now. Let's see, edit dates. There you go. So now both of the assignments just got um, their uh, due dates changed. And let me do one more thing. Let's just do safe assign by itself now. So if I go back to options and I do edit dates, now I could change this to, oops, change due dates. There you go. Let's say we'll do 10 days, edit date. There you go. So now I change the due date again. So let's say if I have a bunch of assignments uh, that need to be visible, but we already have a due date on them. What I could do is I can now go to edit options and I could do edit visibility. I could hide them all at once or I can make them visible all at once. So it's, we have that option, right? So what I'm just for the demo purpose, I'm gonna hide them all. So now you can see that they have, they've been crossed out and the students can no longer see it. Um, and then if you wanna make it visible again, uh, you would just come down here and do edit visibility. Um, we're gonna do visible to students, save, and it's updated right away. So the batch edit feature is very great, very good. Saves us a lot of time. Especially when you do a course copy, mm -hmm. right? If you do a course copy and everything is hidden by default, yep. you can now go into batch edit and make everything, or at least all the assignments available at one time, Correct. instead of clicking each one. Yep. And then let me show you, let's see, do we have a demo course? Actually, uh, let us create a course real quick. Um, if you have any questions, while Monica does that, I could assist with that. So if you have any questions, I could answer them. Perfect, so we have this course here. I'm just gonna cheat a little bit, make it unavailable. So by when you first get your, um, when we, the courses are first created, they're normally set to not available. And once the course gets set to unavailable, now you have the option here to experience the ultra courses, right? So what I'm gonna do is click on this here, and now it says, hey, let's try out ultra. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit try ultra. It's gonna take some time. Um, so it usually takes about, depending on the size of the course, it could take a minute, it could take two minutes. So as you can see right now, it's still telling me that it's been converted. So we'll let that, we'll wait for it to do its magic. And once it gets converted, what it does is it's gonna send out an email to you, letting you know that the course has been converted to ultra, or not to ultra, but it's ready to uh, show you the ultra preview. So we'll wait for that. And did you see, um, right now your courses are all available, right? Mm -hmm. And so Professor Tutsi, if you were gonna go in and try to do this, you will have to make it unavailable like Manpreet did, right? Mm -hmm. So he clicked on the customization and properties, yep. and then he was able to go in and put the availability to no because you have to set it to no in order for that little orange icon to appear at the top. 
Correct. Uh, okay. Because what we did is on the 14th, um, we actually had an announcement out to uh, a couple of weeks ago, or actually a uh, week before, about making the courses available to the students so they could start buying books. So you always have the option to go back in and close it out. So we have directions for that. Um, so if you ever have, if you do want to keep your cor uh, uh, um, course closed out so students can get to it a week ahead, uh, you could always contact uh, myself or you could contact Monica and we could um, help you hide the course uh, from the student view. So right now we have the template ready to show us Ultra. Um, so here's that course converted to Ultra already, right? So if right now it's not fully converted, but it's just showing you a preview. You, at this point, you still have the opportunity to go back to Classic. Um, as soon as you hit Use Ultra Course, there is no going back. <laughs> uh, so before you hit Use Ultra Course, um, just be sure that um, it, it, you're happy with the way it looks. It has all the features you want. It, um, all your quizzes are going to carry over properly. Um, all the tools that you use are available um, in Ultra. So before you hit that button, that's why I would say, please check with the um, designers uh, before you click this button here. Because once you do that, there is no button back. Uh, we can go back, but it's going to be a lot of, it's going to be a lot of time uh, for the designer and for yourself to recover everything. Um, so this is how you could do that here. So any questions on that? Um, I have a like simple question. So once I um, convert my uh, classic Blackboard interface to Ultra, mm -hmm. then what about the student side? I mean, they're gonna see the like, Ultra they will see interface or classic interface. I mean, even I mean, they probably have a classic um, Blackboard interface, right? On their no, see, oh, if you convert the course to Ultra, they'll see the Ultra interface now. Oh. And the nice thing about Ultra is that students could actually um, it's it's more mobile friendly, so students could actually uh, view your course on their cell phone um, browser. Uh, not we don't recommend doing that all the time, but uh, they are able to do that. You know, um, but the only thing I would um, recommend not using um, for on cell phones is when they're taking a test. Um, for that, we always recommend using a secure connection where they're going to be connected at all times and not have any kind of drops. Because what um, cell phones and tablets are concerned, they're concerned. Um, I'm not sure if you had heard, heard this before. It's, they're called um, roaming devices. So mm -hmm. what that means is that they're always looking for a stronger signal. So if you, let's say you have multiple um, Wi-Fi's hooked up on your phone and you decide to walk from one room to another while you're taking the quiz, you're gonna get dropped out because it's gonna say, hey, this connection is uh, stronger, this one is not, so I'm gonna drop this. So that's why we recommend try not to take any kind of quizzes on there. And Sujin, whatever you see, that's what the students will see. Mm -hmm. So if you see this version, the uh -huh. students are going to see this version. If yep. you go in and you see classic, that's the version the students are going to see. Uh, okay. Okay. Thank you so much. And I have another like a simple question. Um, in classic, um, classic interface, now on my side, not the student side, mm -hmm. I often um, uh, check some course materials I uploaded in the past uh, s uh, quarter or like semester system. Um, so I just go like jump, like the, I just look um, uh, previous semester course materials. Uh, would it be the same way, like easier to go back to like check the uh, previous the pre previous uh, semester semester work, um, the quarter systems course material in a um, on this uh, ultra blackboard site? Are you saying like being able to check your previous courses? Yeah, previous. Like, you have very top. Yeah, previous um, the the semester. Oh the yeah. So, materials. so if you want to look at your previous semester, um, there's two ways of doing that. Uh, so if you click on so under current courses, you see there's a little drop down menu here. So if I click on that, I could jump between all the um, quarters or semesters that are available. But this so, is classic, right? Uh, this is so. <clears throat> So it, it will be able to jump to both classic and ultra courses. Sujin, all of your classes are, or all of your uh, courses are classic. You have not moved to ultra yet. Yep. And yeah. so anything you've done in the past will always be in, cl in classic. Oh, okay. 
Sorry. <laughs> oh, okay. 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 Thank you. Of course. Yeah. Any other questions? No? Okay. Perfect. All right. And I wanted to show you one more thing. Um, so if you go under tools under in Blackboard here on the left hand side, uh, so we have some additional support available here. So here um, you can see Blackboard support for uh, faculty and then the after hour support for students. And another thing I recently added was quick links. So quick links, we have, you could get to Blackboard quickly. You could bookmark this page um, if you like. So we have Blackboard, we have your email, student's email, your my CCS eBay, uh, academic calendar, which is really important. Uh, key dates, directory, and then the home page. And then we have the support for faculty and student on here as well. So this is a, something we just recently added. Perfect. And that was it. Anything that's else? it. Yeah. No, that's um, just the last. The last thing I want to. We click back on the presentation and go to the very last slide. Sorry. Sure. So because you all um, were able to stick around for the whole hour <laughs> um, and get to know a little bit more about Ultra, we actually have an option for digital badging. So for any of you that are interested in earning a badge for this webinar, um, you can actually go into Credly, which is our platform that we're using right now. And if you visit csueb.credly.com, you can actually create your own account and you can use your East Bay email or you can use your private email. It does not matter because these badges are yours. Um, and then you can, use that claim code at the very bottom, that really long CSU East Bay dash OC, right? All of that information you can tag in and it will let you claim this badge, right? And what that means is you can print out a certificate that shows that you attended today, that all of the objectives that we covered, um, and it's really nice because you're able to put that then in your file. Right. If you're if you're doing an a e DOS or RTP or whatever it is that um, that you're using, you want to use that claim code at the bottom. So if you create your account, then you will have to verify your account. So you have to log in your email, and then you'll click the link, and it'll take you into your Credly page, and it'll say, okay, here's your badging, and now you can click on the claim credit, and you enter that big long number, and then you can actually claim the credit yourself and print the certificate. You can also share it on Twitter, LinkedIn. Um, so it's kind of a nice little professional development piece if you're interested. It is not mandated. Again, it's completely voluntary. So if you're interested, you can definitely go through those steps. If you're not, you, you do not have to. Um, and I will stick around here if anybody does want to walk through the process. I can definitely do that with you. But if not, thank you so much for attending. We really appreciate it. We will post the recording and please feel free to contact myself or Manpreet if you have any questions or if you are interested in using Ultra because we would really like to support the process of moving from classic to Ultra. Yep. And then what I did is I added the claim badge information into the chat. So if you click on your chat, you could copy the, um, the, the claim code and then the website. Is anyone interested? Do you need um, help going through the Credly process or are we, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> you can switch. Okay. Yeah. I can always follow up too and just send out some instructions via email if you prefer, because I know we're, we're up at our 11 o'clock mark and I appreciate you all hanging in there. So um, I won't push it, but if you're interested, you let me know. I will hang out here for a few minutes. And if not, again, thank you so much for attending.